Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Type 1 and Tech 2022. Now this is the third time this conference uh, has been brought to you online. I'm your host, Jamie Lowe, sometimes heard on the radio, uh, maybe a few times on the TV and on <laughs> social media and stuff like that. And I often like to chat and full-time member of the Diabetes Robot Broken Pancreas Club. And I'm so excited to be here with you today, the diabetes community, the Broken Pancreas Gang, to share our experiences and learn together. This year, Type 1 in Tech is bigger and better than ever with more than 20 speakers. You'll hear from uh, medalists, Type 1 moms, consultants from across the UK, updating on tech pathways in different nations, as well as friends from afar, sharing their experiences of diabetes tech all over the world. This is for you, the community, with you and by you. Some housekeeping though, so please do remember that everyone's experience of type 1 diabetes, their self-management and their use of technology is different. There is no one size fits all in type 1 diabetes and in people or animals. <laughs> this event has been sponsored by Dexcom and Insulate and Medtronic, and we want to thank them very much for their continued support. So there is, however, uh, many ways where you can get uh, in touch and uh, sort of interact with today's session. And we want to know how confident you feel when talking about diabetes technology. And we've got a little poll going on for that. So do interact where you see that. For the Type 1 and Tech Conference, you'll see some videos from them during the breaks and keep an eye out for the pop-up notifications. We'll also be joined by some of the ambassadors throughout the day. So please add any questions you've got for them into the chat box. And for the first time ever, we have two streams at Type 1 and Tech with sessions running uh, at the same time throughout the day. Despite the team's best efforts, though, some of the sessions might finish 30 or 40 seconds before the others. So if you're in stream one or stream two, just hang on around until the session is finished and then use the left hand menu to click back onto stream one for practical reasons. All of today's sessions have been pre-recorded so that no one has to deal with Wi-Fi. I mean, I mean, no one. I mean, there's me obviously here live right now and my wife I absolutely could drop out, but we promise it won't to our best abilities and Mike's not working. So some of our speakers here today may pop into the chat, but we will be capturing all the questions for our speakers and sharing answers uh, to those with you after the event. So do add them into the chat box. There are some very committed and knowledgeable Diabetes UK staff on hand today, and you might see them pop into the chat too. Just bear in mind that they aren't healthcare professionals and neither am I, so won't be able to answer any specific clinical questions. And on the chat, please do add any questions through the day to the specific tab on the top right hand corner this uh, this makes uh, sure that we can answer as many questions as possible without them getting lost and the last housekeeping point if there are any technical problems with the platform you'll see a slide that says if you don't see that slide i think there should have been something in the script there for me to tell you what that slide said um but I, I mean that's a mystery to all of us if you don't see that slide and you're having technical issues it might be worth just checking your internet connection all sessions will be available and shared after the event so you won't miss out and if your internet drops out it'll be there too so Oh, I was talking for quite a while there. The objectives of today, Type 1 in Tech, is about you. To share the journey that we've all been through with technology, to learn about existing and new diabetes technology, to know what to ask for, and to feel confident in asking for it. I think that's a really important point because when we go and see our healthcare professionals, um, you know, it's quite tough to, you know, really say what you want to get out of your healthcare professionals. So, uh, we hope that the sessions all bring a small um, you know, benefit and something to you today that makes living with type 1 diabetes tomorrow that little bit easier. But before we get stuck into the event, we'd love to hear from you. So any second now, a poll should open up on your screen with a question. And that question is, how confident do you feel 
when talking about diabetes technology. There is no right or wrong answer here. It's absolutely brilliant to have you with us here today. Uh, there's nothing quite like the diabetes community. If you're also scrolling through Twitter at any, any point, the conversation is happening there too with the hashtag type one and tech. Personally, I'm most looking forward uh, to uh, everyone getting involved uh, and letting me know their responses to that poll. But let's see if we can bump up those numbers for very confident throughout the day. But first up today, uh, at 10 past 10, which we are, oh, we're a bit over for that, uh, 25 seconds over, we've got type one tech and history uh, evolution. And to get us going, a big welcome to the amazing Pete and Laura. Pete was diagnosed with type one 66 years ago and continues to use his experience to share a positive message. Laura was diagnosed just five years ago and is a big advocate for both tech and psychological well-being. Join them to hear about the evolution of diabetes technologies from the 1960s to today. There may even be a pretty cool science experiment. And if you have any questions during the session, pop them in the chat box and we'll get to them in just a bit. Here they are. Good morning. I am, my, my name is Peter Davis. I was born a long time ago. Um, and I was diagnosed with type, type 1 diabetes back in 1956. So that means that if I make it to the end of November, I will have had it 66 years. Um, I was particularly thrilled to get this medal. I got one for 50 years and I got the 60 year medal because the specialist I was under at King's, uh, Dr. Ardy Lawrence, um, was a wonderful, wonderful guy. He was one of the leading specialists in the, in, in the world. He nearly died from type one and was one of the first first consultants to uh, first people in the UK to actually uh, be administered with insulin. Um, had a lovely, lovely um, way. He always called children with diabetes special children. And you can tell from that lovely letter there. Um, he, it's interesting to say that he did do, he did encourage occasional blood sugar tests. Here, we're, here are we, we do them regularly every day now. So has, has management changed very much? You bet it has. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sh show a few examples now, go through a few things. Um, we used to literally guesstimate, I use that term, um, blood sugars, um, because the, the, you, you've got various colours in, in the urine test. Results could be several hours out of date. You can imagine waking up after an eight hour sleep um, the results could be well and truly out of date. Orange meant more than 2% glucose in the urine. Blue was anywhere between zero millimoles per litre and 10.5. And green is what I did myself uh, best to, to, to keep myself in. Um, so literally it was above 10.5 pretty well all the time. And, and it meant you got no warning of imminent hypos, literally, if it, it, it would just hit you. I thought it might be of interest to do a test here in front of you. I've got my old kit out uh, that you see in the picture there. So here we go. I've already put um, the urine into the test tube. And I'm just going to drop 10 drops of water into it. So here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. There we are. There was five drops of urine in there. And I'm just going to get one of these rather caustic tablets out and pop them in the test tube. There we go. There's the tablet going in. There's the test tube and you will see, you will see it beginning to, I hope you can see that, beginning to see it flare up um, and it's getting hotter and hotter. It's actually boiling the water in the urine and hopefully it'll be blue. Um, there we go, it's boiled. That is extremely hot. I've burnt myself on that many times. And I hope you can see that blue color. So it means I could be anywhere between zero and 10.5 millimoles. So I'll just check on my Dexcom now. Um, and let's see, I am 6.3. So there you are, you see, you, you didn't get very much warning of that at all. I hope that's been of interest to, to actually see a urine test done. So, uh, in the 1980s, testing methods certainly improved. This was a urine test strip. Um, again, not very accurate because of the, uh, the it, it was well out of date, the, the results you got. 
but um, it, it was a little bit more dignified. The first meters were absolutely enormous, absolutely vast, um, but they were a big step forward. Um, and obviously they've advanced since then. That was the one I took up Kilimanjaro when I did Kilimanjaro. And then we've, I've been on Freestyle Libra, which was great. And I'm now currently on the Dexcom G6. So things have progressed enormously over the years. So I thought now I'd look at injection methods. That was the, probably the first kit. I think it was the first kit I used um, with great big long needles. They're about 28 millimeters long. Goodness knows why. I was only two years old when that was being, being administered. The little wires there, you probably wonder what on earth those are for. Well, the needles were used many, many times um, and the, the, the wires were to prevent them clogging up. You just literally run the, the wire through, through the needle. Um, you use them till they became blunt and a bit painful. So they either got thrown away or they actually got sharpened on a stone. There's a comparison just to show you the contrast of the thickness and the, and, and the length of the needles against a penny. This was probably the most amazing step. I was about 35 when I, I started using these, certainly mid thirties. And um, you, could, you could do a blood test, prick your finger, um, and you could get a much, much more accurate result in about two or three minutes if your blood sugar was high. The pen below, the bottom one, was of such a beautiful piece of engineering. It really was lovely, but it didn't contain much, very much insulin. The new, newer Nova pens there contain much more, but it, it, it was a transformation. You could actually give yourself an injection and get, get a blood test while you were sitting at a restaurant table and you didn't have to disappear off to the toilet to, to perform a urine test and do the injection. So dignity was at, la at, at last, at about the age of 35, I found, found dignity. Then I went on to the Animus 5 pump, which was a great thing, and having the Dexcom reading to it was wonderful. And then I start, started looping. I must say, I take my hat off to the We Are Not Waiting group, fantastic group. However, I was a little bit nervous about setting up and getting all the figures right, and it, it seemed very complicated to me, but people assured me it's not. So I went on to the hybrid looping system, the Tandem, T-Slim and Dexcom G6 combination. And I'm loving it. I'm finding it absolutely fantastic. Just a, a, a random sample there, 83% in range. I've had better, I've had worse, but I don't get absolutely fixed on it. I'm, I'm happy with 80% 80, 80 or above. That's brilliant for me. For me. Um, and I'm very interested also to see the new cam apps. I'm not, not using the system, but I know, I know a couple of people who are using it and speak very highly of it. So technology is moving on very very, very much. And I know that other people are going to talk about this. I just thought I'd show you one or two interesting pieces of kit I've used. Um, the comparison of, of the two, two guns there. This thing, I don't know whether you can see this, but if I pull the trigger back, you used to fire that, put it against your skin and fire it. And it was painful. It was horrible. I think I only ever used it once. In contrast, I had this very small uh, in, uh, injection gun, which was much simpler, much nicer, and, uh, and, 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 and really, really worked very well. But those were some interesting kit that I used. Um, there it is, and you can see how small the, the, the gun is against a, a vial of insulin. It all fitted in a very neat kit, there it all is, which could be carried around relatively easily. It couldn't fit in your pocket, obviously, but it was much better. This was a very interesting lancing device, which I had. Um, quite vicious again. It, it came down and hit the finger really hard, but it was, it was, it was, it certainly, it, it had its purpose. You just didn't press your finger too hard against the, um, the, the, the bottom bit there. I found, I thought this was a wonderful in, invention. Um, Novo Nordisk came up with this device. It was the first one I, I'm aware of that actually recorded how much insulin you took and how long ago, because it's very easy to, when you're giving yourself four, five, six injections a day to, to, to miss out and think, did I take it or not? And I, I've been caught out like that before. And there was a development, I never used this, but I thought this was interesting. The, um, it's, it's got the injection of quick kit there and, and obviously a blood, blood glucose testing meter on the top, which was quite a nice combination. So that's it from me. I hope that's been of interest, a bit of a rush through technology of the past, um, but thank you, for, thank you for your attention. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hi, 
I'm Laura. I lift weights, I practice yoga, and I love guinea pigs. I also happen to have type 1 diabetes. When I was diagnosed with diabetes in December 2015, I had lost a bunch of weight, was really tired all the time, and carried a two litre water bottle with me wherever I went. I had a fairly typical diagnosis story. I was in the hospital for an evening before I got sent home and went back to my doctors the next day to pick up all my medication. I started my diabetes tech journey on two insulin pens containing Nova Rapid and Levomir and an Abbott Freestyle glucose monitor. The good thing about the monitor, and something I still use it for regularly now, is doing ketone blood tests. I hated doing finger prick tests and I could only use my ring and my pinky fingers because it hurt too much to use the others. Six months after I was diagnosed, I managed to get a place on a Daphne course dose adjustment for normal eating, for those that don't know. And I met a few other type ones. It wasn't until I met some of these type ones who'd been diagnosed many, many years ago that I realized how lucky I was to be able to get blood sugar results in a few minutes with a light, small blood sugar monitor and that I could do a ketone test without peeing on a stick. As you can probably tell from my introduction, I'm quite an active human being. This makes me really sensitive to insulin something I've always struggled with. My diabetes team realized this while I was on the course and I managed to get some child pens so I could deliver half a unit of insulin at a time. The team running the course also had a trial coming up for a new way of measuring blood glucose and they thought it might help me understand why my sugars were so inclined to drop. Enter the Freestyle Libre Flash Glucose Monitoring System. For those that don't know, flash glucose monitoring is where you can scan your arm with an app or reader to download blood sugar data. It then plots it on a graph for you to spot patterns in your data and treat highs or lows quicker. I was lucky enough to be on a three month trial with the Libre and it massively reduced the hypo anxiety I was experiencing. Because I was so sensitive to insulin, my hypos were sudden and they hit me quite hard, which I found tough to deal with mentally. Although the trial was to prove the funding, uh, the value of funding flash glucose monitoring systems on the NHS, it would be a few years before they were available on prescription. So I started self-funding the Libre. However, through the magic of the internet and the diabetic community, a few months later, I learned about a fancy piece of tech called Dexcom. Dexcom is a continuous glucose monitoring system which works similarly to flash except it sends the blood sugar reading alerts to your phone or smartwatch, and you'd know you were heading for a low without even having to scan. By this point in my life, I was commuting into London and was frequently stuck on a tube, unable to finger prick, but worried that my blood sugars were dropping. This system alleviated all of that worry completely, so I started self-funding Dexcom instead. By April 2018, it became clear, even with my half unit pens, I wasn't getting on very well with injections. There were some days where I was taking half a unit of background insulin in the morning to avoid constantly dropping blood sugars as I went about my day commuting, going to the gym, going out with my friends. It was that point I realized I probably needed to change something about my insulin regime. And I thought a pump might give me more flexibility than I had on pen injections. My diabetes team approved my request to be put on a pump based on how little background insulin I was taking some days and how I struggled to correct without hypoing, even on my half unit pens. When it came time to switch, I got offered the choice of two pumps. One of these pumps was a My Life Ipso pump. They told me that it came with an app that contained all of the settings to calculate the right bolus for my meals, and that the app connected the pump to my phone via Bluetooth. Being someone who loves to try new technology, I immediately jumped at the chance to have it. It took a while to get all my settings right and learn all the nuances of being on an insulin pump. But between the pump and Dexcom, I finally felt like I controlled my blood sugars instead of them controlling me. And the bonus was that all I needed to pop out of the house was some sugar, my pump and my phone. This was probably about two and a half years after I got diagnosed. And it took me that long to find an insulin regime that worked for me and ease most of my mental stress around diabetes. The developments of diabetes tech since I got diagnosed have been crazy. And even crazier still, in August, I got put on a hybrid closed loop pump system just six years after diagnosis. 
This is the next generation of the pump that I have been using. So this pump uses an app with built-in AI to control my basal settings, so my background insulin. Depending on what my blood sugars are doing, it automatically adjusts how much insulin I'm getting throughout the day and takes while I take care of the mealtime insulin as usual. There was still a settling in period, and it doesn't mean that I can completely forget about diabetes, but since I've been on it, I've maintained my time in range and I've knocked nearly 15 millimole off my HbA1c, which is wild. Most importantly, I can now bolus from my phone so I don't have to dress according to where I can place my pump and I can stop cutting holes in my clothes uh, for tubing to go through. My other favourite thing about it is that it helps massively with post takeaway blood sugar highs. <laughs> I've experienced a lot of change within diabetes tech in my very short time of having diabetes but I'm very aware that I'm one of the lucky few who've had ready, ready access to all of this. Primarily, it's boiled down to me having diabetes teams who are keen to try new technologies, and I've also been lucky enough to self-fund my CGM equipment. Despite all this progress with tech, there's still a way to go to make sure there's consistent access to it across the country, as Diabetes UK campaigns, such as the flash glucose monitoring campaign a few years ago highlighted. Honestly, I'm just really excited to see what the future has in store for new diabetes tech. And it may sound cliche, but having the right equipment for you can be life changing. And I hope that more diabetics have more choice with their pens, their pumps and paraphernalia. I know that diabetes teams are all over the country and around the world are working hard to make sure that the highs and lows of a new diagnosis don't have to be quite so tough. And I know that the diabetic community will keep campaigning and raising awareness every step of the way. There we go. Our uh, session is off to a great start. We've hit the ground running. There's about 2,000 of us signed up today. So it's really, really great to have all of your company. And of course, uh, thanks to Pete and Laura uh, for sharing their experience uh, with us today. Now, uh, we are going to be having lots more coming up uh, in the course of today. So what did you think of Pete's test, uh, tube urine glucose test? I mean, it's crazy that that happened, that, that we had to treat our diabetes through, um, you know, an, an abstract, well, maybe not an abstract, but of like an, a, an uninformative colour that we saw on a test strip. 